What's up guys? Today I'm going to start a new series called Let's Talk, where I talk about a specific gun part or an accessory. So let's take a look at my 300 Blackout AR pistol that I recently assembled. Now, anytime I post this picture in a Facebook group, I always get the same comment posted several times. They comment on the fact that I mounted this MRO too far forward in on the handguard. Now, I understand why I get this comment, and I went over the reasons in the AR scope mounting video, the possibility of the handguard rotating, or the movement from heat expansion rates of the dissimilar metals. So today I want to talk about AR barrel nuts. Barrel nuts aren't very exciting to talk about, but you might find this interesting. Now, a barrel nut on AR rifles and pistols serves two purposes. One, to keep the barrel secure to the upper receiver, and the second is to help secure and retain the handguard, especially with free float handrails. Now let's go back to the 300 Blackout build and the MRO mounted to the handrail. Now the first reason it could be a bad idea to mount it here is the fact that the handrail could rotate taking the optic out of zero. Luckily there are many types of handrails to choose from today that have anti-rotation tabs on the rail that stop the rotation from happening by holding onto the upper receiver just under the pick rail where the receiver and handrail meet. Also there are manufacturers that have designed their own proprietary receivers and handrail combinations that keep the rail from rotating, but the rotation isn't the only reason for not mounting it here. And the other reason is heat. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Now, for anyone that's had the opportunity to shoot a select fire AR for an extended amount of time, they can tell you that the handrail, either connected or free floated, will transfer heat to your support hand pretty quick. And that happens for two reasons. The thermal conductivity properties of the metals and the heat radiating from the barrel and gas tube. The thermal conductivity is what we will focus on because the point of this video is the barrel nut. In most modern AR-15s, you'll see a free-floated rail installed, and if it's not specifically built for long-range use, you'll find that there are either iron sights or backup iron sights installed. Now, if it's a bad idea to place an optic here because it may affect your zero, why would you have any confidence that your irons or backup irons would maintain zero? To my logic, and I might be wrong, it seems that an optic mounted here would show less of an impact on the zero because any shift in the axis would be worse the further out the sights are from the point of the shift. Well, when it comes to an air barrel nut, there are many different types, but when I look at the vast majority of barrel nuts out there, I end up seeing a common feature among them. The amount of barrel nut surface area that contacts the handrail. Now everyone knows about thermal conductivity, that if you have a hot piece of metal and a cold piece of metal, and you put them together, the hot piece will transfer its heat through conduction to the cooler piece, and the more surface area of the two that are touching, the faster that transfer through conduction will occur. We should also talk about the dissimilar metals in this area and how they would affect thermal conductivity. The metals we should think about in this area are the brass or steel bullet casing, the steel barrel, the aluminum receiver, the steel barrel nut, and then the aluminum handrail. And aluminum has a much higher thermal conductivity coefficient than steel does. Now heat is the enemy of many things, and as such, it is with firearms too. If you let your cyclic rate get out of control, you can start to have problems. And if you're wanting accuracy, a hot barrel can start to open your groups up. One way to help with barrel heat is to have it fluted. A barrel will conduct heat away from the chamber and down to the muzzle of the barrel, but increasing the surface area of the barrel for air cooling by fluting would be better. And the movement of heat from the chamber to the muzzle reminds me of another way to remove heat via heat sink. Now the aluminum handrail is a possible heat sink with a lot of surface area, but what if we could add another heat sink before the heat reaches the handrail? That heat sink would need to be the barrel nut itself. Enter the Strike Industry Strike Rail Barrel Nut. Now the nut that comes with the strike rail is steel, which isn't a very good heat sink material. Well, it's a good thing Strike Industries offers an aluminum barrel nut, and aluminum is a very good material for a heat sink. That and the fact that the design of the barrel nut leaves it with a small surface area that actually contacts the handrail. Also, when looking into the handrail from the sides of the receiver, you can see quite a bit of daylight. That daylight is more exposed surface area that this aluminum heat sink barrel nut has to air cool and conduct heat away from the barrel and chamber. Now if there was just a clip on fan, that would help in its efficiency. So I guess this video was a long and ridiculous way of letting you guys know that I think Strike Industry Strike Rail and Barrel Nut were well designed, even if they didn't intend on the cooling properties within the design itself. Add that to the fact that it has locking tabs and you don't need to index the barrel nut correctly for the handrail to line up, and you got a pretty good product. 
Now, this video isn't paid for, nor am I sponsored by Strike Industries. I'm just a guy that likes the new direction that they're going in. They might have started out gimmicky and niche, and they had some quality issues, but I think that's in the past, and they're one of my go-to manufacturers today. That's about it for this video, and there will be more to come. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And while we're here, my old website focused on my video production as a whole, because at that time I was in college, and now that I've graduated with a bachelor's degree in film and video, I've ditched that site and made a new one, Fitty Actual, which is the same as my Instagram handle. I'm still trying to get everything to work the way that I want to on the site, but eventually all my content will be available, the Freedom 350 podcast episodes and extras, plus it'll have its own forum. When it's ready, I'll also be leaving Patreon and making my contact available via a small monthly subscription so you'll be able to go to one place and get all of the 50% content you want. Well, I guess that's it, guys. See you next time. And I hope to see you guys on my new site as well. Later.